Tomorrow, it marks the 50th anniversary of the safe return of the Apollo 11 astronauts back to Earth. That's right. The Bay Area erupted into a spontaneous celebration. People poured out of their office buildings. Drivers honked their horns. So, what did we learn from this historic mission? Juliet Goodrich casts her gaze to the moon. 50 years ago, more than half a billion people saw it on TV. Americans walking on the moon. So what have we learned from this historic mission? Plenty about the moon, the Earth, and ourselves. This is the moon up here, look. 50 years later, uh, it's, it's a big deal. From the Chabot Science and Space Center in Oakland. I think it was pretty amazing. To a musical tribute at the San Francisco Symphony hosted by a real life astronaut. It blows your mind when you think about what we did back in 69. For the past week, the Bay Area has been over the moon about the moon. Ask folks what they see when they gaze up at it. I see possibility, I see vision, I see just kind of the audacity of what we can do as a people when we work together. They got the flag up now. And this was an epical moment in the history of humanity. Right here is the Apollo 11. Professor Andrew Fracknoy is an astronomer and educator. He sees the moon as a Rosetta Stone to the solar system. Seeing what's happened on the moon is a key to understanding our own history. I'll try to get a rock in here. The Apollo astronauts brought home 842 pounds of moon rocks. Upon analysis, a surprise. These rocks are a weird mix, similar and different to the rocks found on Earth. This is a great story. Scientists now believe the moon was created when a small planet collided with planet Earth billions of years ago. That sent debris from both planets into orbit around the Earth. That debris eventually merged together to become our moon. So it's a giant ancient catastrophe that we think led to the moon. The Apollo 11 astronauts also set up several experiments on the moon. One is still operating. It uses lasers to measure the distance between the moon and Earth. It confirms the moon is slowly moving away from us about an inch and a half every year. The moon landings allowed us to measure it to amazing precision. Scientists believe the tidal action on Earth is slowly pushing the moon away. Over millions of years, the Earth's spin has slowed down and the days have gotten longer. One day in the very distant future, we may no longer enjoy a total eclipse of the sun. As the moon moves further away, it will look smaller in the sky and it will no longer be able to cover the sun completely. One last great lesson from the moon missions, the moon dust. It's so fine, it gets into everything. That dust turned out to be a major issue for the astronauts. The astronauts' suits and boots were covered in the ultra-fine dust. The crew had to be careful not to bring too much into the capsule as it would get into the air and make breathing hard. Any uh, settlements that we put on the moon or any future missions are going to have to be sure that their equipment, their habitats, their suits are ready to face the challenge of the moon dust. It's a challenge these space fans hope we embrace as to where we should go next. Everywhere our imagination takes us. The astronauts were quarantined for 21 days when they came back from the moon, just in case they brought back any dangerous germs that would spark a worldwide pandemic. They did not. In San Francisco, Juliet Goodrich, KPIX 5. In 1969, I watched it live. The splashdown occurred at 9.50 a.m. To see the original report that we filed on that day, you can go to KPIX.com.